Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar on TRIP Database. My name is Nicole. I'm one of the librarians with the WHA Virtual Library. So today's webinar is being recorded and it will be available to you after the presentation, probably within a couple of days. So keep an eye out for that in your email. If you have questions at any point during the webinar, please feel free to enter them into the question box, which is in the GoToWebinar software, which is probably on the right side of your screen, depending on your setup. And with that, let's get started. So today's objectives, we're going to briefly talk about the WHA Virtual Library and its services, for those of you who might not be familiar with it. We're going to discuss TRIP database and its um, use, and then we're gonna walk through some of the features of the database. So the WHA Virtual Library provides access to electronic resources and library services for WHA staff, eligible community health agencies, and eligible personal care homes. If you're in uh, the WHA staff category, you probably already have an account, uh, but if you don't, or if you're in one of the other two categories, I'd invite you to visit our website and there are instructions there on how to get us an account set up for yourself. We provide access to an array of electronic resources um, and also a number of different library services. So those services include literature searches, where we'll actually do research on your behalf on a topic of your interest, document delivery to help you get access to any resources that we don't subscribe to that you're interested in, and also education and training sessions like this one. So now that we've introduced the WHA Virtual Library, let's talk about uh, the topic of the webinar today, which is the TRIP database. So what is TRIP? TRIP uh, turns research into practice, that's what it stands for, and it's a freely available clinical search engine. TRIP indexes journal articles, but also other content types like guidelines, e-textbooks, and a bunch of others. And we'll be going through that when we look at the database itself a little bit later. TRIP classifies its results based on the evidence pyramid. So for those of you who might not be familiar with the evidence pyramid, you'll see different versions of it flying around the internet. This particular one's from Yale. Uh, so up at the top of the pyramid is the highest quality of evidence. So you see up at the top there, the systematic reviews, and then below that you've got your evidence synthesis and guidelines and your article synopses. So this top component of the pyramid is what's known as filtered information because it takes all of the primary studies and um, compiles them, analyzes them, synthesizes them into this high quality uh, recommendation or finding that summarizes all of the lower quality evidence. Further down in the pyramid, so lower quality, but still of reasonable quality, we've got our unfiltered information. That's where you find your primary studies. So the top of that particular section of the pyramid is your randomized control trials. And then under that, you have cohort studies and other types of observational studies. And then below that, you've got your case series, case reports, that kind of thing, which are lower levels of evidence. So depending on your topic of interest, if there isn't any filtered information relevant to your search topic, you might be finding yourself relying on this unfiltered information, these randomized control trials, these cohort studies, to help you um, understand the evidence in your topic area. And then at the very bottom of the pyramid, we have our other types of information. So this includes like background information, expert opinion, uh, e-textbooks, blogs, anything like that. So this isn't typically considered evidence-based research, but again, depending on your topic area, it might be all that there is. So now that we talked a little bit about what TRIP is, let's talk about how you would actually get to it. So on your screen here, you will see our library URL. I'd recommend that you bookmark that. Um, from the library website, you go to resources and then to collection, which you see highlighted there at the top right, uh, sorry, top left of the menu. That will get you to our databases list. So this list contains all of the different databases available through the WHA Virtual Library. You would scroll down that list to TRIP. So let's actually take a look at doing that now. So I've got the WHA Virtual Library website open here. I'm gonna to go to resources, and then I'm gonna to go to collection. Again, this is our collection list. This has all of the databases that are available through the library. So I definitely encourage you to look through this list if you haven't already, but I'm gonna to go to the T section and I'm gonna open TRIP database. 
Now, if you've accessed our library resources previously, you might recall having to log in, and you'll notice that for this one you don't. That's because we have access to the free version of Trip Database, and it doesn't require any sort of login. There is a pro version, and if you're interested, you can certainly subscribe to that as an individual if you like, uh, but we don't. We just have access to the free version, and that's fine because it's still a very powerful research tool. So you will see here on the screen uh, this big ad at the top for the pro version and also some uh, highlights of what is available in the pro version that's not in the free. Don't worry about those. We're just going to go with the free version because it's still suitable for our needs. So in this big search bar in the middle of the screen, you can treat this search bar as like a Google type search. You just enter keywords in and go, but that will tend to not get you very precise search results. So there's a few different ways that you can approach making your search more precise in TRIP. First of all, you could do simply a search in part of a record. So for example, I can enter in title pneumonia, and this will get me results that have pneumonia in the title. So you see, I still have 16,000 results for this particular search, but if I do just pneumonia, I have 53,000 results. So there's a very significant uh, decrease in result count by using that simple title search option. The other thing you can do is search by PICO. So if you're not familiar with it, PICO is a way of structuring clinical questions. Uh, we recommend you use PICO to frame a clinical search topic if you're submitting a literature search request to us. Uh, PICO stands for Population, Intervention, Comparison, and Outcome. So if, for example, I was interested in um, the use of yoga to reduce symptoms in asthma patients compared to education sessions. My population in this case would be asthma. My intervention is yoga. My comparison is education. And my outcome is symptom management. So you can fill in every category if you want to, although that will tend to cut down on the number of results you receive, especially if you're using terms that might be represented in different ways in the literature. So for example, education is sometimes encompassed in what's called usual care for a particular condition, and therefore it might not explicitly use the word education. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take out my outcome and comparison and just search on my population and intervention. And that's a way of broadening my search results. Another thing you could do to broaden your search result is add in additional terms as synonyms. So maybe I'm interested in yoga or Pilates, or even I could do exercise, depending on what specifically I was interested in finding. So let's search that and see what we come up with. So you see here for my asthma search, I've got 779 results. So again, if I thought that was too many, I could add in uh, some comparison or outcome terms, or I could take out these broadening terms that I've added in here. If I thought that was still too few, I could add in some more broadening terms, or I could even take out either my population or intervention and search just on one concept. Again, it'll kind of depend on what I'm interested in finding. But once we've done that, so let's take a look here at our results. So beside each result, you will see this little pyramid shape. This is that evidence pyramid that I was talking about earlier. So this shows you where each result falls within the evidence pyramid. And I will just quickly mention here, uh, they include ongoing studies, like this ongoing systematic reviews, protocols, that kind of thing, at the bottom of the evidence pyramid. And that's just because it hasn't yet undergone peer review. So that's why that's like that. But it classifies each result according to that evidence pyramid. And you can see over on the left-hand side here that I can limit my search according to either a level of an evidence pyramid or a specific type of results. So if I click on this first option here, all secondary evidence, this is going to limit the search to the things at the very top of that evidence pyramid. So here I've got my systematic reviews, my meta-analyses, my guidelines, things like that. I can also instead limit specifically to one of those types of results. So for example, if I'm interested only in guidelines, I can do that. If I'm interested only in Canadian guidelines, I can limit it just down to that. So you'll see or here I've got my results from the Canadian Pediatric Society. Uh, further down on the list here, we have the clinical Q&A option. This is an older uh, option called TRIP Answers, where TRIP actually compiled some of the literature to develop 
a clinical Q&A approach uh, that synthesizes some of the available evidence into something that TRIP itself has developed. These are a little bit outdated now, but let's just take a look at what they look like. Uh, so this is a synthesis of some information on whether children with well-controlled exercise-induced asthma should have a flu vaccine. And one thing to note on this page, over on the left-hand side here, it says that it's flagging for you that this result is older. It's more than two years old, and you can click here to find more relevant recent results for this topic area. So going back to my search here, further down on my list, I have my primary research. This is where I would find uh, randomized control trials, where I'd find cohort studies, things like that is lower down on the evidence pyramid in my primary research section. Uh, something else that TRIP does in here, which is pretty cool, is uh, if you look at the controlled trials, they have a automated assessment of controlled trial quality. So this is done using a service called the Robot Reviewer, which automatically assesses the abstract of the article to try to guess the quality of the trial. Uh, so you can look at that website to have a better understanding of how exactly they're coming up with that assessment. But keep in mind here that it's based on the abstract only, and it's done by a robot as opposed to an actual human being. So it may or may not be an accurate assessment. So keep that in mind if you're trying to limit by uh, quality, it might not be a reasonable assessment of quality, it'll, it'll just be a guideline. And then further down on my list here, after my primary research, I have all of that expert opinion slash background section. So as I said, they've got their ongoing studies that are in this section just because they have not yet undergone peer review, but they also have things like patient information, blogs, e-textbooks, that sort of thing. There's a couple other ways that you can filter through TRIP results if you go further down the list here. Um, you probably won't be interested in using the LMIC filter, but just so you understand what that is, it's a low and middle income countries. So uh, you might also hear the term developing world for that. Um, so that would be what that filter is for. And then you also have different date filters that you can add in. And these filters actually add uh, the information to the URL of the page. So if you were interested in a date that isn't in there, you could actually manually change that to date to something else. Say I'm interested in since 2013 for some reason. I can do that and you'll see exercise from date 2013. So that's an option as well. All right, uh, looking at the actual results now. So each of these results comes with a little snippet from the abstract that shows you why this particular result is being pulled in. So this first one, in addition to having the terms in the title, also has physical exercise for people with asthma. So it's very relevant to the topic that I'm interested in here. As I mentioned earlier, you have that evidence pyramid and the color-coded indication of what type of result this is. And then you also have the year and the source of this particular result. So this one's from Prospero, which is a protocol registry for systematic reviews. Um, you can also change the ordering of the results on this page. So for example, if you sort by popularity, it'll sort by which results get downloaded the most. You'll sometimes see that some results have this indication that they're only available to pro users that actually isn't the case so if we take a look at this particular result, if i open this up this is going to go to pubmed and i see over here i've got my pmc full text option so i do actually have full text access to this particular article and keep in mind that if we didn't have that option you would be able to get this article through our document delivery service so don't be scared off from looking at a particular result by that pro indication chances are you'll still be able to get access to it um, so, other things that you can look for on this page, uh, you have these indications that there's an abstract available from PubMed. Again, if you're interested in this article, we can probably get the full text of it for you. The ones that have this particular icon are supposed to be indicating that there's a full text available. So let's just see if we can look for, I'm going to change my order in here to order by date instead, so that I will get the most recent results. And uh, these links are supposed to go to the full text of the record. Now, this particular one is just a protocol, so it's only opening a protocol of this particular search, but a lot of times it will be opening a full text PDF of the article. And again, if it doesn't open that, we'll be able to provide it for you through our document delivery service. So that's definitely a cool option for you. Some other things to be aware of with TRIP 
is that they have this results page key. So this is some information that kind of breaks down what that search result page looks like and what the different features are. So if uh, you don't feel like watching this video again, you can definitely take a look at this as helping you figure out what the page means. So you see here, you can turn off the snippets, you can filter your search results, that kind of thing. You can report a bro broken link or share it on Twitter, etc. So I'm doing all of this without having signed into anything because this is a free search engine. I can do all of these things without logging in either with my library account or with a personal account. However, there is an option up here to sign up or log in. And the reason that you might choose to do that is that by logging into the site, you can do things like saving or bookmarking particular items. So you see under the snippet here, we've got this bookmark icon, that's what that's for. If I had uh, signed into a personal account, that would save that result to my account where I could then come back to it and look at it later. You also have options to save search history. So if I'm interested in saving this particular search, it would show up in my search history from a personal account. And then you also have the option to set up an alert. Now I will mention with regards to setting up alerts in TRIP, that they are a little bit less specific than setting up an equivalent alert in say PubMed or Medline would be, just because it's not, uh, it's a keyword based search only. So it's harder to kind of drill down and be very specific about the type of results you're interested in. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can absolutely set up an alert that way if you want to. Uh, so I could set an alert to say, I want to see every newly added result that is from this particular search, for example but it might not be as specific as I might want as a search in PubMed. Uh, something else to note about TRIP is it has its own blog where it highlights updates and new features. So we're talking about how we up add new content, which is a really interesting read through. Some of it's done automatically, some of it's done manually. Uh, so they talks a little bit about which different sites that they look at. So this month we added 500 articles from all of these different sites here. So that's a cool thing to read through if you want some more background on where the information in TRIP is coming from. You'll find that a lot of the stuff links just back to PubMed, but there's also some links to some more specific sites like Prospero, I mentioned is a systematic review protocol site. There's, if you look at the guidelines section, there are direct links to different uh, guidelines in particular areas. So Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the US, the UK, and other. I'm just going to take out my date limit here because it's causing some problems. All right, so if, for example, I search for pneumonia uh, and I look at my guidelines, um, we can look at the UK guidelines, we can look at US guidelines, we can look at Australia, New Zealand, or we could look at guidelines from other places in the world. So for example, this first one here is the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine. There's some few other ones like COVID-19 ad hoc guidelines, that sort of thing. So there's different ways that you can narrow down your search using these different filter options. Again, depending on what specific type of evidence is of most interest to you. So when would I use TRIP as opposed to a more specific database like PubMed? I would probably use it specifically for finding those things that are outside of the typical peer-reviewed journal article literature, like uh, those evidence-based synopses, like the guidelines are really useful in this particular source. Um, some of the other features are cool, like the automated controlled trials um, assessment is cool, it's interesting, but again, if you're not 100% confident in how that determination is being made, it's maybe not something to rely on 100%. But I find TRIP does a good job at compiling different types of evidence from different sources. So you can figure out, okay, first of all, I'm looking at the secondary evidence, and if there isn't anything in there that's useful for me, I'm gonna go down to my primary research. And if there still isn't anything that's useful for me, I'm gonna go down to that background and expert evidence. So it really lays out for you the different levels of evidence and what may or may not be most useful for you. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Now we do have lots of time now for questions, and you can also email me directly. So I'm just going to not share my screen anymore and I'm going to sit around for a few minutes and wait to see if anybody has any questions. Please feel free to enter them in the chat and also please feel free to email me after the presentation if you prefer. Again this presentation has been recorded. It will be shared with you probably within a couple of days depending on how long it takes to compile it.
All right, I'm not seeing any questions just at the moment here. Uh, if you're still typing, I'll give you a couple more seconds just to figure out what the questions are. But otherwise, um, thanks everybody for attending this presentation. I will send out the recording and the slides as soon as they are available. And I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks all. Bye.